Hi there, I'm Vicky Parfano from Vicky Parfano Stamps. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm making a card using one of the cards from my Easy Print cards, and these will be available in the online store as soon as it opens. I'm going to be using this one here. This is a full blown rose, and it's part of the Big Blooms digital stamp set. And I've printed it out on various paperways. It's on some beautiful um, Whisper White cardstock. It's on some craft cardstock. It's on some watercolour paper and just some printer paper. And I'm going to use this to colour and add into my art journal. Today, I'm going to show you how I'm doing a watercolour card. Now, printing it out on my home printer, it comes out in this beautiful soft grey colour using the black ink. Now, all printers are different, so um, it might print out a little bit differently on yours, but I just love the softness of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with this one. So I'm going to trim my card down. This is the paper that I have printed it out on for this project. It's 100% cotton Archer's watercolour, rough 185 GSM paper. And this is one of my papers of choice. I do like Archer's, all the Archer's Aquarol brand. A lot of the watercolour pads that I use I get from my art store and different papers and different textures will give you a different look. But this is a rough paper. So if you have a rough 185 GSM good quality paper, you should get similar results to this. And all you have to do is pop that in either a trimmer or well, you could use a pair of scissors if you want to because the line is there to guide you. And there's my paper trimmed, two cards ready to go. As you can see, so I'm going to be using the full blown rose. This is going to be a Mother's Day card for my mum because in Australia we have Mother's Day coming up. So how I'm going to turn it into a card is just to grab my bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, you could use the end of your scissors. You could maybe use the rounded end of your scissors. I'm going to use the bone folder. Just line up the two pieces of paper fold it in half and then give it a good burnish with the bone folder on both sides. And you can see how I have designed this card. It's taking up almost all of the front cover and I'm going to be putting the word love across here. I have some gold foil stickers that I picked up from the reject shop, which is like a very inexpensive shop in Australia. I really like the look of these because they were like modern calligraphy and this is something that I seem to see a lot that's trending in card shops and things. Excuse the glare there but I do want to show you it is nice and gold foil and it's going to give me something similar to a mink machine I hope. Um, let's see how it turns out but I think it's going to be okay. I want to show you first of all how I colour it. Now you can do a couple of things with this. You can just colour it as it is with your watercolour paints. I'm going to use some um, high stick painters tape i'm only going to go for a very narrow border i don't want a really big border i just want to get the card attached to my work surface here and my work surface there's a very thick plastic sheet on the top here you could attach this to something like a um, sheet of thick cardboard that's come from a scrapbook paper kit or just some corrugated paper or something um, a cereal box anything like that just to a flattened cereal box of course just to keep your surface clean and tidy so whatever you have use what you've got and as I said this is not a necessary step if you're only using a small amount of water it's just something that I like to do to get a really good result now the trick to making sure that you don't get anything bleed underneath is to give that a real good press right up into the corners because if you're going to get any leakage it's going to be probably around the corners you are going to need some paper towel so I've got a roll of paper towel ready here I like to quarter mine now you could use any kind of watercolor paints and just a, a cup of water and some brushes I'm going to use aqua brushes because I just think they're really easy to use and I like the technique I've used it a lot and if you've been watching my videos on my other channel, you will see I use this technique quite a bit. I'm going to use the pale blue for the background. I'm going to get that in first. And what I want to do is have quite a lot of water on it. So I'm going to actually wash, because I want this to be really, really pale, I'm going to wash the background with clear water first. So I've got some just clear water in this aqua brush. And I'm going to provide, I guess, a little dam for where the water is going to go. Now this is going to be a really 
rough wash. It's nothing too precious here. I'm not trying to do anything that's too finely detailed. You want to always have a spare sheet of paper ready to blot up any of your excess. And the first thing I'm going to blot is right around those edges. So crumple it up. And I'm just going to make sure there's no, no, um, sorry, no ink. I was going to say no ink. No water sitting there in pools. So what this has done, it's actually wet the paper, but the, the water, you cannot see it. it. The paper is moist, but you can't see the water. That's a really good tip when you're starting out so that you don't kind of um, put your ink down and get too much. Now, what I'm using for ink is refill ink. So this is Stampin' Up's ink, and I've picked a nice blue color, a nice green color, and a nice pink color. I've picked blue for the background, green for the leaves, and pink for the rose. And I'm going to change the colors by the number of layers that I put on. I'm going for a really pale wash in the background. And so let's see how this is going to look. And remember the more water that you have in your brush and the more water you have in your plain brush, that's where you can get a variance of color going. And I'm just going to be really loose. And a loose water color is beautiful because it shows that it's a handmade piece it's something that doesn't take you too much to create and because the paper is already moist you can see how it's starting to seep in without contaminating the center I like to do the outside first because you can always come back in and add more further down the track so this is the outside of my image get that sorted let that dry and then you're ready for your coloring of your bloom and your leaves this is just one technique for watercolouring. You could do really fine watercolouring with a really thin brush. You can see I'm not even being all that careful about where it goes. I like the fact that this is a loose wash. I like the fact that it's kind of sketchy. That's the look that I'm going for. And the first thing I'm going to do now before it dries is mop up some of that colour so that we've got a really pale background and we've got some splotches because I want splotchy background. I want that to be really dry now so i'm mopping up any bits of water so that we don't have a problem with the colors running before i get onto the leaves i'm going to show you how i created this technique so i have some water in a water brush and all i did was add a couple of drops of re-inker so this is watercolor ink and i'm just going to pop a couple of drops into the top of the barrel and that's it pretty easy you want to give it a good shake so that it's mixed you can see I'm not too fussed about a certain shade of color I've just picked a very pale blue for the background a nice pink for the rose and some green for the leaves and you can see I'm going to get it started on this square of paper towel here so that I know there's some color coming out that's a really nice color I like it I like it a lot and I'm going to do the same technique where I put some water over this edge with just a plain aqua brush with just a bit of water in it and get that started. Just a very slight layer of water. All I want to do is moisten the paper. I don't want it sitting in pools because the colour will run. And I'm doing it on all three leaves. And now I'm going to find this plain piece of towel that hasn't got blue on it and just mop it. So that's getting the paper ready to take the ink. And so now here we go with our green wash. I love the fact that this has a lovely soft grey line that's printed out on my printer. I think it's come out really well on this paper. And this will print out in either US letter size or A4 size. So whichever paper you're using, these easy print cards will work on your printer. Just print it to the letter size of, of or the paper size of what paper you're using. And you'll end up with two really nice cards. And they should fit in your regular sized envelopes, depending on which country you're in. Okay. Again, blot fairly quickly. What this does, it gives us our first undercoat of colour. Now, what I want to do is get a little bit of dimension in here. And you can see I've already put in the veins in the leaves for you to make it a little bit simpler. So all I'm going to do is draw lines 
into the center of those veins because this is where the shadows will be and around the outside like this really quick really simple okay now again I'm going to just pull them forward where they need to be they don't need to go all the way to the edge really not important you can go a little bit along the outside if you want to get a little bit more depth of color so I brought in my heat gun and I dried that but it didn't take very long to dry at all because as I said there's not a lot of water on it now let's get into the bloom itself and again same technique some clear water just to create a little dam around the edge of our flower and this helps keep the color within the lines and I like to outline the edge first and very importantly make sure you blot as you can see I don't know if my camera's not picking up but I can see there's pools of water on there all I want to do is just blot it so there's a very pale sheen and it's ready for the pink so the colors I've used are called tempting turquoise melon mambo and wild wasabi but any colors that are you know if you want to do a red rose you could do a rose red color um, you could do a baby blue in the background and you could do an olive green for the leaves it's really up to you what you like so you can see I'm starting off on this piece first until I've got a nice run of color I'm going to start in the center because that's going to be the darkest part of my rose anyway and I'm really just going to blend out and this means that most of the moisture is going to be in the center and it can get paler as it goes towards the edge but there's nothing too scientific about this you just want to make sure as you get close to the edge there's less water in your brush so you can have plenty of water on the inside there as you see then as you get to the edge you're just going to touch the edge of the brush to the edge of the image like that and I'm not squeezing this brush I'm just using the amount of water that's on it at the moment if I need more water I'll take it to the center of the flower to squeeze it and get a little bit more water in the edge of the brush and then just pick that up and take it to the edge so it's common sense that you're not you know putting a great pool of water right near the leaves at the edge and I can see there's even a little bit too much there so I'm just going to blot the outsides and then just very gently touch the edge with my brush this is what I love about aqua brushes they're so clean and tidy you don't have to keep changing the water in your glass of water you don't have to keep rushing to the sink and changing the water keeps it all nice and clean these are great for traveling too you could do this project if you were you know in a caravan or camping or something like that or traveling this is really looking great I'm loving how this looks now you can see there's a nice darker color in the center because I've added more color to the center which is where the shadows are going to be in the center of the rose anyway and I'm not worrying too much about light source here I'm just doing something that is going to look nice as I said keeping it nice and loose nice and loose and easy I've got a little bit over on the green leaf but if I mop it straight away because I haven't put any water on that leaf I've corrected that mistake immediately okay now I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to come back in and add some deeper colors like I did with the leaves in where I've drawn those lines for you to follow on the stamp now I brought my heat tool in dry that off a little bit and now I'm going to come in again with some deeper color starting at the center which is where the deeper colors would be anyway right in the very center deepest and just around the edges just follow the lines that I've created for you there's no right or wrong it kind of makes sense that you can see where the shadows would be that if a petals lying open it's going to be lighter if it's a bit more closed it's going to be darker it's fairly simple to get the shading on this as you can see I'm just shading the parts that are layering under or over and 
so if it's a petal that's sitting under it's going to be darker if it's a petal that's sitting on top it's going to be lighter and then where the petals meet there'll be a little bit of a shading And you can see how that's bringing it to life already. Now, as it dries, it'll be more subtle. It looks a little bit two-toned at the moment, but as it dries, you'll see that those colors really fade back. Okay, now I'm going to hit that with the heat gun and dry off that next layer. Almost done. And I'm really happy with how that looks. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully take off the tape. Now there is a technique to this. When you're taking off your tape, you want to see the layer that went on first, so it looks like this one, and you want to pull it as close to your surface as possible. So if you were to pick this up and lift it up, you're going to rip your card. So you want to go slowly and keep it slow and low. You want to keep it in line with your tabletop as much as you can. And the slower the better. Now I've dripped a little bit of pink on here. I'm not too concerned about that. I'm just going to wet it with some water and spread it out and then mop it up again. It's just very light and I don't even know if it's showing up on camera. It's just a very small drop of pink that I must have splashed on there. Not too concerned, as I said. All I'm going to do is bring in my blue. Here's my blue. go over the top and it's basically disappeared <laughs> so look how pretty that is doesn't that look great so there's your card elsewhere and I'm going to take my letters and I'm going to write the word love across the top and layer it right across my rose so just make sure it's nice and straight A little bit that way I'm going to put a little bit of distance between each of the letters just so that it's easier to read and V these were a bargain buy for two dollars fifty for a packet of two of these gold letters fantastic and an E here we are and there's your card finished so there's my Mother's Day card for my mum a hand watercolored rose with some gold foiling so that's today's project I'll be showing you how to color each of these roses and also the magnolia that's in Big Blooms digital stamp set in different mediums. So there'll be Copic markers, there'll be Prismacolor pencils, there'll be regular colored pencils, there'll be watercolor pencils and markers as well. So on different mediums, you'll get different results. I'm just absolutely thrilled with that. I love it to pieces. I know my mum's going to love it. Fits into a standard size envelope. And there's your Easy Print Bloom card complete. Thanks so much for watching. These will be available in my online store as soon as it opens. And anything that you make using the Easy Print cards, just put the hashtag Vicky Parfano stamps on them and I'll come and check out the work that you've made. I'd love to see what you make with these cards. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.